Hi, my name is Glenn Weinreb, and today we're going to look at what it would take to accelerate the development of fusion energy. Typical fusion systems maintain a hot plasma within a donut-shaped structure, as illustrated here. There are primarily two types of nuclear power, fission and fusion. Fission is the traditional form that generates electricity with uranium fuel. However, this is not popular due to meltdown risk, nuclear waste, proliferation risk, and cost. Fusion, on the other hand, does not have these issues. However, it is still in development. To solve the carbon dioxide emissions problem with fusion, electricity produced with a fusion machine would need to cost less than electricity produced with fossil fuel. This is theoretically referred to as economic fusion, and it would entail low-cost, continuous operation without failure. If green energy were cheaper than carbon-based energy, nations would decarbonize to save money to be competitive. However, to globally decarbonize over several decades, economic fusion would need to be achieved within a handful of years, and then thousands of machines would need to be built quickly. This would require R&D funding that goes beyond current levels. The world currently spends $4 trillion a year on fossil fuel, and harm from climate change is expected to reach trillions of dollars annually. Therefore, it's reasonable to spend additional billions on economic fusion in an effort to save trillions in climate-related costs. In 1961, President Kennedy stated he wanted a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. In response, a program was set up and funded. In theory, a similar approach could be applied to economic fusion. But how might it get started? Let's explore. The tokamak and the stellarator are two fusion designs that could potentially produce large amounts of electricity in the near future. The tokamak features a donut-like shape, while the stellarator is more bumpy. According to cost models, electricity from a stellarator costs less than electricity from a tokamak. Therefore, the stellarator is likely to be favored. To produce electricity at a low cost, the energy output from the plasma must exceed the energy input, and the electrical power generated by the site must exceed that consumed by the site. This requires powerful magnets and adequate plasma confinement, both of which are well understood by scientists. Hot plasma inside the donut-shaped chamber radiates heat outward and causes the internal surface of the chamber to become hot. This heat must be moved outward to create steam to press on fan turbine blades to produce electricity. The easiest way to do this is to pump molten metal toward the hot plasma and then outward. There are two ways to do this. One involves having liquid metal flow in front of the internal surface plate, and the other involves flowing liquid behind the plate. Flowing liquid in front is referred to as liquid metal wall. This is illustrated here with the liquid metal shown in red. To get this to work, magnets would need to push the molten metal outward toward the metal plate while it flows and removes heat. The alternative cooling method is to expose a two millimeter thick metal plate to plasma radiation and cool it by flowing molten metal along its back surface within channels. However, radiation from the plasma will eventually damage the metal plate, requiring replacement. This involves machine disassembly, which is very expensive. Therefore, it is more cost-effective to protect the metal plate with flowing molten metal 
and only assemble the machine once during its lifetime. In other words, liquid metal wall might be required to achieve economic fusion. Also, this is a new technology and more experiments are needed to verify feasibility. Decelerators require irregular shaped magnets to confine plasma and these are expensive to fabricate using traditional methods. In theory, costs could be reduced by placing alternating layers of superconductor and insulator onto a rotating tube by an additive process. However, this is a new technology and therefore needs more experimentation. Researchers can design a fusion machine entirely on paper and calculate the cost for that machine to produce electricity. This has been done and a design that achieves economic fusion was published in 2024. This design reduces costs with liquid metal wall and next generation magnets. It took scientists many decades to produce a machine that by design achieves economic fusion. This by itself is a remarkable achievement. The U.S. government currently supports fusion research with hundreds of millions of dollars of annual funding. However, they do not pick winners and losers. This means they support many different approaches instead of focusing on one design. This will not solve the climate problem since that entails a surge of funding into one machine that by design produces low-cost electricity. There is only one company that is working on this, and it is called Renaissance Fusion. However, their funding is probably 10 to 100 times less than that needed to achieve economic fusion in a handful of years. The fusion company with the most money is called Commonwealth Fusion Systems. They hope to build a machine in the 2030s that generates electricity. However, their machine would be subsidized by investors, which means it would not produce power that is cost competitive in an electricity market. In other words, do not expect Commonwealth to solve the climate problem. Furthermore, climate is not their responsibility. Instead, it is to increase their own value for shareholders. So how might we solve the carbon dioxide emissions problem with fusion? A good place to start would be a surge of funding in technologies needed by machines that achieve economic fusion by design. In other words, more R&D money for liquid metal wall and next generation magnets. For details, click on the link in the description below. And for more Climate Lab videos, visit www.aplantosavetheplanet.org. Okay, that's it for me, and I'll talk to y'all real soon.